Good evening, everyone. Thank you for tuning in for another series of webinar from the School of Bioscience Faculty of Medicine, Bioscience and Nursing. If you are watching this, please hit the like button and share. Also follow our Master University Facebook page to be notified for the upcoming webinars and events. If you have any questions, drop it in the comment sections as we will address it in the Q&A session. In today's webinar, we are going to talk about the diagnosis of respiratory pathogens. Before that, let me introduce Mr. Mohammad Javed, a lecturer from the School of Bioscience, Faculty of Medicine, Bioscience and Nursing. Mr. Mohammad Javed has been in academics since the 2012. His expertise are in the, med in the field of medical microbiology and immunology and has over five years of hands-on experience in clinical laboratory. He has published many papers in the Scorpus Index Journal and presented research works in several national and international conferences. His research activities include stress-based hormonal studies as well as medical microbiology oriented case studies. Without further ado, let's hear it from him, Mr. Mohammed Javed. Uh, thank you, Mr. Tan, uh, for the introduction for me and uh, for introduction. And good afternoon, everyone. Uh, uh, welcome to the webinar. I would like to thank Masa University for giving this opportunity. We can start uh, the diagnosis of respiratory pathogens. So human respiratory system consists, uh, there is a upper respiratory tract and lower respiratory tract, mainly uh, upper respiratory tract, nasal, cav nasal cavity, pharynx and all, in lower respiratory tract, uh, larynx, uh, trachea, and the bronchial tree and all. So mainly the upper respiratory tract infections are uh, the pharyngitis, rhinitis, and all. And uh, lower respiratory tract infections are the bronchitis and all. We'll, uh, we'll tell in detail. Mainly the lower respiratory tract infections are bronchitis. Bronchitis is the inflammation of the bronchi. Bronchi is the large and medium sized airways in the lens. That causes a coughing a symptom, including coughing the sputum and wheezing and shortness of breath and chest pain also will come. This is bronchitis. Uh, and uh, there is a two types is there uh, bronchitis acute bronchitis that is short term uh, usually it will last for three to uh, ten days and uh, another one is chronic one chronic uh, bronchitis it will cause productive cough uh, last uh, last for three months to two year and all and um, when these two when these two together uh, with a decreased airflow is known as chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. Uh, mm -hmm. Chronic bronchitis is a respiratory disease and uh, is it, uh, what is the mainly it will cause uh, the increased overproduction over production of uh, mucus and mucin. This is the uh, chronic uh, obstructive pulmonary uh, disease. So mainly pneumonia. Then pneumonia is the one of the, uh, uh, by the way, yesterday was the World Pneumonia Day. Uh, every year, a million of people millions of people die due to this uh, disease uh, pneumonia uh, mainly is, is the world leading infectious uh, infectious killer of the children under 5 year and most commonly in it will uh, have a most prone to mainly in uh, below 5 year old age and uh, above 65 year old persons uh, mainly the two extremities it will cause most of death and it's an inflammatory condition of lungs affecting perm primarily the small air sacs known as alveoli, mainly affecting the alveoli. And uh, so it typically uh, includes some combination of productive or dry cough. It's a, it's a result dry cough and chest pain and fever and difficulty in breathing. It's a, one of the killer disease uh, in children. A lot of people die due to this uh, disease. Um, in 2070, around 2.5 billion people died with this disease. And types are mainly uh, there is a uh, pneumonia of community acquired pneumonia. Community acquired pneumonia means uh, it uh, will get the, uh, pneumonia from the uh, outside the hospital, from the community side. And hospital acquired uh, pneumonia mainly it will get after getting the admission to hospital, from hospital, mainly a hospital acquired pneumonia. Uh, caused by mainly streptococcus, uh, mainly bacterial origin, mainly streptococcus pneumonia, hemophilus, and all. Then 
The next one is aspiration through inhalation uh, of uh, air and food. Uh, it will enter to lungs and vomits. Is uh, it will enter the pneumonia aspiration pneumonia. Next one is AIDS uh, related pneumonia is a life threatening uh, disease. It was mainly pneumocystic carini and hemophilus, also and cryptococcosis and that. Then uh, recurrent uh, pneumonia. Recurrent pneumonia means uh, it will cause uh, in a year two three episodes of pneumonia will come the based on the immune status of the patient mainly the weaker immune persons it will come uh, recurrently uh, recurrent pneumonia mainly the etiological agents for lower respiratory tract infections mainly uh, pathogens of acute bronchitis um, uh, mainly the coronavirus, rhino, adenovirus, influenza virus. These are the common uh, etiological agents for our respiratory tract infections. Then uh, pathogens of acute bronchitis, mainly uh, it will cause, uh, you, everyone know the mycoplasma pneumonia is a mostly the acute bronchitis caused by bacterial and fungal pathogens including uh, mycoplasma pneumonia it will affect mainly the young adults okay the symptoms will include uh, around uh, months and chlamydia and chlamydia and another is a very important one is border labetrosis uh, it will cause a whooping cough uh, now there is a vaccine available for this one and if uh, a substantial morbidity and mortality in unvaccinated patients uh, in case of Border telepetrosis it will cause the whooping cough. Now, everyone, uh, there is a vaccine available for border telepetrosis. Then, uh, community acquired one is generally among in healthy patients, over 100 possible infections caused for this one. The typical bacterial in, uh, organism includes mainly it will cause Streptococcus pneumonia, Haemophilus influenza, and Moraxella, Streptococcus. Uh, or yes, so this all will cause the community acute pneumonia. And uh, some atypical microorganisms also, and, uh, mycoplasma pneumonia, chlamydia, chlamydia sitaki, coxiella burnetti, and legionella, yersinia pesti, and salmonella typhi also will cause this pneumonia. Then, uh, community acute pneumonia uh, include uh, some viral infections also. The, uh, the influenza virus and uh, most of the virus uh, that can cause the upper respiratory tract infections and uh, even fungal infection also uh, mainly the opposentic fungal infections uh, and uh, some uh, systemic fungal infection mainly called mainly uh, histoplasmosis blastomycosis coccidiomycosis and paracoccidiomycosis mostly these fungal infections and there is uh, mainly is uh, some uh, some restricted geographical area is not worldwide, especially the fungal infections uh, for uh, causing the community acquired pneumonia. This is not worldwide, uh, some uh, geographical area only, mainly this uh, fungal infection uh, restricted in, into Latin American countries, uh, especially Mexico, Argentina, and all, US, and all. Then this is a, one of the important one, the hospital acquired pneumonia. Hospital acquired pneumonia, we are getting after admitting the hospital after two to three days, we will get the disease, we will get from the hospital. Okay? So, um, uh, there is a cross contamination, mainly uh, it will cause uh, Staphylococcus pneumonia and uh, Staphylococcus pseudomonas, and uh, this is a nasocomial infection, mainly Staph pseudomonas, Klebsiella, Staphylococcus pneumonia. Hemophilus, some anaerobic bacteria. Most commonly, uh, the Streptococcus pneumonia and Pseudomonas and all. Then, uh, next one is aspiration. Aspiration pneumonia mainly is an anaerobic bacteria affect the lower lobe of the right lung. It, it, this is mainly uh, cause suspect the alcoholics and intravenous drug abusers and uh, deliberate persons and all. Uh, this uh, factors for this mainly the pure dentition and difficulty in swallowing like that patients and impaired consciousness. So uh, it will enter uh, the, uh, it will enter in their lungs uh, accidentally or this aspiration pneumonia cases for this way persons are the more, more usually aspiration uh, pneumonia mainly it will uh, cause mainly impaired consciousness patient persons and dysphagia and being bed, being uh, bed-borne patients and any neuromuscular disease 
patients and uh, this kind of people are more prone to get this kind of infections then the aids uh, related pneumonia uh, typical bacterial infection are still most common must consider the uh, tuberculosis and pneumocystic uh, gicravici gicravici pneumonia this is a very important pneumocystic uh, this is a fungal uh, bac uh, bacterial infection and other uh, aids related pneumonia means that's depends upon uh, the immune system means aids related you know that's immunity become very loss so any kind of a bacterial and fungal in bacterial viral infection can come the most commonly seen infections as opportunistic infection include the fungal infections uh, such as candidiasis the cryptococcosis mainly cryptococcosis histoplasmosis and coccidiomycosis will enter through inhalation the mode of transmission for that fungal infection mainly more inhalation through inhalation it will reach to the lungs from there it will disseminate on various organs the fungal infections are very dangerous actually it will take long time to cure and uh, then atypical mycobacteria also will cause uh, in aids related patients then viral infections such as uh, cytomegalo epstein barr and bacterial infections such as cardia legionella and parasitic infections such as toxoplasma gondii also will cause this is the um, picture so then the uh, the another important thing is handling of respiratory specimens uh, the specimen quality is very important so that's very important thing is the quality of a specimen that will uh, that's very important thing that will help for the diagnosis so uh, the successful of diagnosis is largely on the quality of the specimen and the condition for the transport and storage of the specimen before it's processed in the lab that's very important one we have to uh, quality specimen quality is important if uh, if any contaminated means it will mislead the lab results and appropriate collection and the handling uh, of the respiratory specimen uh, the specimen collection is very important uh, one is uh, some point to consider and uh, mainly we have to collect the specimen the time relatively to symptom onset the clinical presentation is very important After showing the clinical presentation uh, we have to collect and what when considering what specimen to collect and, uh, and another thing is uh, maintain proper infection control uh, when while collecting the specimen so uh, the especially in tb and corona and all we have to maintain the proper infections control the ppe kit and ppe and all personal protective measures and uh, use approved uh, collection methods mainly we have to use the approved collection methods uh, equipments when uh, collecting the specimen and uh, we have to handle and store and shipment of specimen, uh, specimens appropriately the specimen collection uh, everyone should wear the personal protective uh, equipment mainly the glove mask and protective uh, clothing eye protection uh, sharp protection and that's very important while collecting the respiratory specimens because mostly it will uh, during collection time it will splash to the air uh, there is a chance to get the infection from the patient so that's very important then the timing uh, for specimen collection the respiratory specimen uh, we have to collect as soon as possible after symptom begins ideally within one, within a week Okay, uh, and uh, before giving any anti any medications, antiviral or antibacterial medications, and we have to collect multiple sample also. Sometimes we will miss the uh, organ organism, so that we have to collect multiple specimen on multiple days. That's very really important to uh, uh, miss the. Uh, we have to avoid miss any uh, microorganism. And the specimen collection, uh, we have to collect in two ways: uh, upper respiratory tract and lower respiratory tract. Mainly, uh, the upper respiratory tract we have to collect, and lower respiratory tract. Okay, mainly upper respiratory tract infections, uh, the rhinitis, pharyngitis, and laryngitis, and lower respiratory tract infection, bronchitis, pneumonia, and tracheitis. So uh, these are the collection sites. Then. Um, 
types of respiratory tract specimens mainly upper respiratory tract specimen nasal sap is the first one uh, then nasopharyngeal sap nasopharyngeal wash or aspirate and oropharyngeal sap or wash yeah, so uh, mainly this uh, nasopharyngeal wash and we are collecting for the corona and all. most of the viral infection we have to collect the nasopharyngeal sap then uh, okay so this is the pictures is a nasal sabbing and throat sap nasopharyngeal sap and uh, nasal aspirate nasopharyngeal aspirate then uh, the types of uh, lower respiratory samples sputum uh, concentrated the, we have to mainly the early morning sputum means uh, that is highly concentrated that one is the uh, most preferable then tracheal aspirate from the trachea we have to aspirate uh, the uh, the cells uh, with the with the help of the tube intubation then bronchoalveolar larvae we have to collect uh, with the help of the bronchoscopy and pleural fluid also then the specimen collection uh, handling and transport tb case tb uh, specimen uh, types is the one of the important infection uh, it will cause the respiratory disease uh, tuberculosis specimen types there is a we have to classify into respiratory and non respiratory mainly uh, respiratory uh, specimens uh, sputum that are expirated and induced one in some patients we can get the uh, sputum so uh, they cannot unable to produce sputum with the help of some hypotonic solution we have to take sputum uh, and uh, the bronchioalveolar larvae then bronchial washing and brush then uh, transtracheal aspirators and non respiratory mainly we have to collect in disseminated diseases mainly the tissues in case of tuberculosis it will uh, spread from the uh, respiratory tract to its various organs so we have to collect the non respiratory uh, specimens such as tissues body fluids blood stool gastric larvae and urine so respiratory uh, specimens are uh, the first uh, most important one is the sputum sputum is a very uh, important specimens uh, is a recently discharged material from the bronchial tree with a minimal amount of oral or nasal uh, material that's very important a good specimen uh, doesn't contain much uh, saliva or then uh, nasal or oral material okay then uh, expirated sputum generated from a deep productive cuff it is expirated sputum um, uh, then uh, the induced sputum is there is produced with the hypotonic of the saline uh, if patient unable to uh, produce the sputum there on in like that condition we have to take the induced sputum and uh, mainly uh, the sputum uh, collection say so establish the initial uh, diagnosis of tuberculosis and uh, the monitor the infectious of the uh, patients the may we how to uh, know the um, degree of severity and uh, determine the efficiency efficiency effectiveness of the treatment also means we have to monitor the uh, the infectious of the patient how how uh, how uh, bacteria is uh, infected then uh, we have to uh, count the numbers and uh, after treatment also we have to uh, collect the sputum and we have to check the numbers of so if number decrease means uh, they are uh, respond to the treatment so we have to this is a prognosis is help to for prognosis also to determine the effectiveness of the treatment also we can um, see on these methods so this is the uh, indication for sputum collections Then uh, sputum quality is a very important thing. Is sputum quality uh, usually the specimens are very thick and mucoid and or mucopyrrole, very thick mucoid and mucopyrrole. Okay, ideally we need more, mainly the three to five ml CNF, and even though smaller quantities quantities are acceptable, the quality is satisfactory. Okay, if a poor quality uh, specimens means very we can uh, we can just very thin and the water is contains more saliva. I can see the picture. Okay, like that uh, sample is uh, unacceptable. Okay, and uh, means uh, that is the thing. So laboratory question form should indicate the 
uh, when a specimen is induced about the specimen being labeled and accepted quality. Usually the uh, induced uh, sputum contain little uh, respiratory secretions to avoid that one. Usually we have to get good specimen, uh, very thick and contain the mucoid and mucoporin material. So the collection, sputum collections is very important collection procedure also. First, uh, the early morning uh, sample is uh, preferable. So we have to first uh, for the early morning, we have to gargle or rinse and then spit out the water you are given. Then open the sample container and hold the container, uh, your mouth, your lips inside. Then take a deep breath uh, as much you can. Uh, then uh, cough, then uh, cough, then spit into the uh, container. Okay. And uh, you have to take the, uh, uh, the sputum only and don't mix the saliva. Okay. So uh, the, you can see uh, we are looking at the specimen. It's very thick, means it's a, what is a suitable one. Uh, and uh, thick and yellow or green and dull. In some uh, pseudomonas infection, it become very green color and dull. Then we have to close the lid. Uh, if there is any delay, we have to keep in fridge. Don't refrigerate. Okay. Uh, then sputum quality, you uh, can see thick and new, uh, make a poor, you can see the pictures, then hemp deposits, bloody sputum, in some conditions you can see the bloody sputum, salivary one that is unacceptable, then watery, uh, watery we can uh, acceptable only in the case of induced uh, case, induced, we have to collect by indu in induced one, we can use that, okay, otherwise that is unacceptable. Then, um, some indications for sputum collection. Uh, that's for init initial diagnosis of tuberculosis. Usually, we have to collect at least uh, three uh, sputum specimen on different days. Okay, multiple sample within 24 hours. Uh, 8 to 24 hours. Uh, uh, at least one of the sample is early morning. Better we have to collect all the samples in early morning specimen that's more concentrated. And optimally, the sputum should be collected before initiation of death therapy. That will interfere the uh interfere the microorganism growth actually so we have to collect three samples and uh we have to we, uh, we have to collect before uh initiation of any drug okay. then um for release uh from the home isolation okay tb patient means uh if the patient smear is positive on treatment collect uh three sputum specimen are negative then only we have to release from the home isolation yeah so that's very important uh thing then uh, uh monitoring of the therapy also very important so obtain a sputum specimen for pulse at least monthly uh, until convert to negative then uh the specimen collection also very important. So all uh, these aerosol producing procedures pose a risk of exposure. So we have to take care the the uh, air collection lab technician should be very. Uh, we have to wear the personal protective equipments and uh, negative pressure room. Okay, that will help for preventing the cross contamination. Whether the, the collecting other specimen through sputum collection or bronchoscopy. Uh, if the patient or suspected or confirmed to have tuberculosis means uh, airborne precaution must be used. Normally, we have to wear the things. Uh, we have to PTB patients mainly in a negative pressure room. Okay, that will help to prevent the cross contaminations. Okay, and so uh, this is because this I told not say air generating procedure, particular the respiratory type uh, PP is very important. Then uh, we have to collect in a sealed proof container also. Then the storage and transport of uh, sputum specimens, collection site uh, should be refrigerated samples that cannot transport uh, immediately to reduce the growth of the contaminating organisms. And specimen uh, should deliver the uh, laboratory uh, as soon as possible within 24 hours collection is it's uh, about batching and actually uh, these are the main things we have to uh, these are the precautions we are collecting during the uh, collection of the sample and um, mainly the 
pulmonary specimen other than sputum mainly uh, if in a disseminated cases the tb it will sometime it will uh, disseminate into from lungs to other part of the body so in the like that conditions uh, we have to collect the bronchial larvae bronchial uh, brushing endotracheal aspirate and transtracheal aspirate and all. Uh, these also these are the other uh, than sputum we have to collect this one usually uh, this one this um, um, my, in case of TB is a very slow growing microorganism it will take uh, 12 to 24 hours but other respiratory fora it will double within uh, 50 to 20 minutes these are the bronchial larvae uh, endotracheal aspirate transtracheal aspirate these are the other uh, specimens uh, pulmonary specimen other than um, then uh, the non-respiratory specimens, uh, variety of uh, extra pulmonary specimens are there, uh, which may be uh, we have to divide into two specimen from non-sterile body sites and uh, the sterile body sites. Uh, usually, we have to collect in a uh, leak-proof container and we have to uh, transport as soon as possible. With, uh, this one mainly the extra pulmonary specimens, uh, uh, the mainly the gastric aspirate and uh, urine. This also we have to collect the early morning in a even urine also early morning specimen. Uh, stool we can collect any time. Uh, the stool and all minimum minimum volume one gram. Uh, under gastric uh, aspirate and all we have to collect five to ten ml. Uh, gastric aspirate and uh, urine we have to collect in uh, multiple days. Okay, and the stool no need uh, sample is enough and stool uh, refreshes if delayed more than one hour but do not keep in freezer then other uh, specimens are csf and uh, csf and all we have to transport as early as possible and do not refrigerate 10 ml is enough for uh, csf and the pleular peritoneal fluid and uh, tissue lymph node Blood. These are the other extra pulmonary uh, specimen uh, for uh, TB. Uh, mainly blood and L10 ml, we have to collect minimum 5 ml and uh, CSF and L10 ml. Uh, and uh, transport also, we have to uh, transport as early as possible. So, specimen transport. The transport uh, of biological specimens, uh, mainly the triple package system, uh, you have to a leak proof uh, primary receptacle and leak proof uh, secondary packaging containing sufficient additional absorbent material. Also, we have to use the package should be dry. Uh, the all transportation condition we have to use ice dry uh, shall be placed outside the secondary receptacles. So it should be tight container, kind of leak proof receptacle uh, we have to use for the transport of biological specimens. Then uh, other uh, lower respiratory specimens like bronchial washing, uh, the lung aspirate and the bronchial uh, lung biopsy and our bronchial washing we have to uh, collect with the help of the bronchoscope. The lung aspirate and the uh, lung biopsy material, uh, these are the other respiratory samples. The main uh, Important microorganisms is mycobacterium. Mycobacterium, everyone know this is, this is the aerobic bacilli, it's non spore forming, non motile, and cell wall rich in uh, lipid content, highly mycolic acid. And uh, the, we cannot uh, use the gram staining because uh, mycobacterium, how uh, the thick, uh, their cell wall is very thick uh, because it's a rich in cell wall contain, rich in pep. The ordinary ordinary stain cannot penetrate the cell wall of mycobacterium, so we have to use acid fast staining because the high lipid content high, due to this mycolic acid. So it's very a slow growing bacteria. Most of the species very pathogenic to human. So you can see in soil and water also, and is a uh, global. Epidemiology tuberculosis around uh, 1.9 million deaths per year due to this uh, tuberculosis. Uh, mainly, uh, it uh, 1.7 billion people affecting. Okay, so every year, a lot of people uh, die due to this tuberculosis. There is uh, a 
disease we have to classify into pulmonary and extra pulmonary tuberculosis pulmonary tuberculosis it will be mainly it will uh affecting the lungs okay the mode of transmission uh through inhalation is the primary site of infection is lungs so pulmonary infection only infecting the lungs then uh, the extra pulmonary tuberculosis it will disseminate to other organs from lungs it will uh, disseminate into various organs then um, the pulmonary to uh, tuberculosis and post uh, primary tb uh, uh, that is a post primary tb is the reactivation after uh, years and extra uh, pulmonary it will uh, extra pulmonary means it will uh, from pulmonary site it will disseminate into various organs Mainly, the pulmonary uh, tuberculosis, the transmission through uh, the amount of transmission aerosols, mainly transmitted through the droplets, sneezing, coughing, sneezing, even tiny droplets remain suspended in air for a long time and get access to the terminal air passage. So that's very important. So the even small, tiny droplets will, will, will cause the, we are inhaling, we'll get the tuberculosis. And, uh, the pathogenesis of the uh, tuberculosis, uh, this mycobacterium uh, through inhalation. So, uh, in a, this inhalation will lead to lungs, but in the alveolar macrophage engulf the uh, bacteria, then bacilli uh, replicate within the mac uh, macrophages. Uh, later, the macrophage will die, then uh, the infected macrophage migrate into local lymph node and uh, it will cause uh, gone focus, gone focus is a Pleural abscess in the apex of the lung, and it will cause the uh, it will lead to a primary complex will form, and uh, so our cell mediated immunity will active that stop the uh, destruction, uh, stop the cycle, this cycle, and the destruction is spread. Okay, uh, but uh, the bacteria, viable bacteria, uh, press, uh, viable bacteria not replicating uh, bacteria present in the macrophages. So uh, our cell mediated immunity will uh, stop this cycle destruction. Actually, then uh, we have to do um, for the detection of the uh, tuberculosis mainly we have to do the tuberculin skin test. It's a delayed hypertensity uh, reactions uh, test. The Mantox test. Uh, Mantox test is there. Uh, it will uh, it will give the um, reactions. Is the two test. It will check the hyper delayed. Uh, sensitivity of humans because the induration we have to check the induration uh, okay so this one then uh this uh, reading of tuberculin test also we have to check three days injection measure only the induration uh, more than 15 uh, normal 15 mm then uh, the tuberculin skin test is not 100% uh, sensitive for the infection of mycobacterium because a lot of factors influencing because uh, some uh, condition will uh, affect affect this uh, tuberculosis false positives and will get and uh, the factors affect the tuberculosis just mainly we can get the uh, it will cause in case of uh, non tuberculosis mycobacteria also it will cause the positive reactions in duration because and recently vaccination also will cause the uh, Induration will cause and energy. Some persons' energy means uh, there is no immune response, especially in the recent TB infection, very young age, and uh, recently vaccinated people. And that will, there is no reactions. That is, we can call the, the there is no immune, human response. Immune response we can call energy. And uh, the laboratory diagnosis for the TB mainly direct uh, uh, evidence is the acid fast bacilli. Uh, at all ordinary, uh, we already uh, at all that the gram stain cannot can do uh, cannot shake the mycobacterium. So we have to do the acid fast as uh, one just um, then microscopic culture histology antigen and antibody and DNA test and there. then indirectly we have to check the uh, the skin test, delayed uh, tuberculin test, Mantox test, and antibody demonstration. Entire. The laboratory methods, including uh, smear and microscopy, acid fastener stain. There is a two method: hot method and cold method. Zeal Nielsen is a hot method, uh, and the quinone stain is a cold method. Gravid stain. Entire. We have to use uh, twenty percent uh, sulfuric acid for that one. 
uh, acid first bacille appear in red uh, slender long shape this is bacille and uh, we have to do the AFP smear within three days and the uh, zeal nielsen stain is a very simple just uh, required a skilled technologist to read that's very important skilled technology to read very uh, in even, even very scanty and then we have to patiently we have to set the smear and uh, we have to use for AFP smear, assess the infectiousness and then and monitor the response to treatment. Okay. During treatment, after uh, taking the medicine, also we have to uh, collect the sputum from the patient and we have to check uh, the uh, count AFP smear. After uh, after uh, taking the treatment, after taking the medicines, if there is a uh, number of the AFP is less, that indicating the response will treatment. So it will help for the prognosis. So this is the uh, AFP. Acid fastness due to mycolic acid. Then other stains such as fluorescence dyes, uh, ramine and rhodamine stains. It will help for the faster screening, uh, but uh, this they need the fluorescent microscope needed. And uh, the reporting of sputum microscopy of AFP. Uh, so we are, that's a that's a very important one. Uh, how to report? So we have to a experienced technologist. We have to report this one because uh, need a lot of patient also. If uh, first we have to check uh, if hundred uh, field oil emission field we have to check. We have to check if, uh, then only we can give the negative. Okay, none per hundred uh, oil emission objective. There is no um bacillae means we can be negative and even one to nine per hundred field per hundred field we can give uh, the scan d and we have to report the exact number also okay then a uh, 10 to 99 per hundred uh oil immersion field means we can be one plus one to ten uh, per field per, uh, per oil emission one to ten bacillae per oil emission field we can give uh, Two plus and more than ten per field, we can give. Or uh, we can give this three plus. Okay, this this one is a uh, why is uh, acid fast uh, bacillus is important tool because it's allow it's a quick identification of TB cases. We can we can do within uh, half an hour. We can do this procedure and so it's very inexpensive and low to uh, identify potentially infectious cases. And that okay, this is a is a very uh, kick identification method for mycobacterium tuberculosis. Then other uh, media such as uh, solid media is there, liquid media is there, LJ medium and uh, uh, agar based one and middle group medium and that. But uh, what is the problem of the culture of mycobacterium? These all are slow growers, very slow growers. It will take time to produce the colony. And uh, uh, we have to incubate 37 degrees for to uh, four to eight weeks. Uh, some we have to the carbon dioxide the enhanced growth is a colony on LJ media is a special media for TB. Uh, it's a rough, uh, tough buff colored colonies. You can see the uh, identified by the neutral induction and the neosin test. You can identify the tuberculosis. The culture we have to use the LJ medium, middle books medium, and that. It's a, it's a small, rough, tough uh, col uh, colonies. It will take time. That is another problem. Uh, the rapid identification method are useful for the detection. This is the colonies on LC medium, the rough, tough, and buff colonies. Then other fungal infections are uh, the opportunistic fungal infections are ca histoplasma capsulatum. But this, uh, what, what is the thing means? This and are not very common. This is uh, restricted into some geographical area, histoplasma capsulatum, coccidis, imitis, and uh, basido, uh, basidomyces and all. Histoplasma capsulatum is the causative agent of the systemic fungal infection. It will cause uh, histoplasmosis. It's a dimorphic filamentous fungi. And uh, mainly, uh, this and are uh, mainly restricted into Latin American countries and US. Uh, it uh, mainly this one, uh, the ecological uh, association means the bats, bat gone, chicken house, their poops contain the fungal spores. So this also, this fungal infection also will enter to our body through inhalation. Okay, uh, inoculation is very rare. 
mainly it will attack it will attack the lung liver spleen it will disseminate into various part of the body in this condition we have to collect the extra pulmonary specimens as putum in clinical specimens such as putum bone marrow biopsy bronchial washing gastric washing and all uh, disseminated cases also it will cause uh, the pulmonary symptoms such as a dyspnea productive cough and anorexia weight loss night sets and all uh, growth on the media so for this is the fungal culture on sga based plasma the next one is a recent one is coronavirus mm -hmm. corona is a single stranded rna virus is belongs to coronavirus family is emergence of most current coronavirus sars 2 uh, responsible for the, uh, disease of covid 19 okay it's a it has a this community attention now the common symptom is 99 person will show the fever uh, and the loss of appetite fatigue uh, loss of loss of smell and shortness of breath lot of respiratory coughing sputum muscle pain and all in severe cases of coronavirus is a difficulty of walking confusion blue uh, face and lips and uh, uh, in the blood picture it will show uh, decreased uh, white blood cell it will lead to uh, kidney failure and high fever also so uh, virus is rna virus so uh, mainly the testing uh, usually we have to conduct the molecular methods mainly we have to this uh, is the rapid identification diseases molecular methods when we are we have shown the symptoms or exposed to the patient someone with virus we have to do molecular test pcr and all the antibody test uh, when you are previously had a suspect you had a covid 19 and your healthcare provider was doing you have antibodies we have to check the antibody uh, for the antibody detection uh, nasopharyngeal sap is a uh, one of the important uh, specimen for uh, the corona is a respiratory sample i will show how to collect the uh, respiratory specimen the how to obtain the nasopharyngeal sap specimen uh, mainly we have to collect the specimen from the uh, respiratory surface of respiratory mucosa with the nasopharyngeal sap this is a procedure used for uh, covid 19 uh, in adults and children so while taking while collecting the specimen you have to take the pp this is very important i will show how to obtain as as a soft this is a video of clinical medicine from the
Uh, then the uh, serology based test for COVID-19 is mainly the types of serological uh, tests available now in order to better quantify the number of cases of COVID-19, including those that's asymptomatic, maybe asymptomatic or have recovered. The types of serology as a uh, currently rapid diagnostic kits and uh, the enzyme liquid assay and neutralization assay and the chemiluminescent assay, the molecular methods. So uh, rapid uh, diagnostics test, we can, and this, uh, this is a qualitative assay, we can within, uh, we can get within the 30 minutes, okay, uh, that we can uh, get the presence or absence of the antibody against the virus in the patient serum, but we cannot quantitate the virus number. The next one is uh, enzyme linked assay, we can get uh, within two to five hours, presence of absence is quantitatively antibodies, uh, antibodies against the virus in person in the patient serum. Then uh, the neutralization assay is there, that is the active patient's antibody, presence of active antibodies in the patient uh, serum it can be uh, a time result within three to five days. Uh, and the chemilubicence is the faster method, within one to two hours we can get, it's a quantitative method, uh, we can get the presence or absence of the antibodies. So these are the uh, important tests for COVID-19. Uh, this, this is the another one. This is the latest uh, method. This is it will, one of the most advantageous methods. Isothermal amplification assay is where it will take 30 minutes for the uh, identification. Uh, this is mainly the molecular biological test. Is a uh, typically this test uh, detect the DNA using the fluorescent tags. It's read out the specialized machines CRISPR gene editing technology modified perform. Uh, the detection. This is the advantage, main advantage means it's the faster than RT PCR. It's, it's, it's amplify the, the test amplify RNA directly without RNA to DNA conversion. So in this type of RT PCR, it's faster than PCR. Okay, and uh, there is no repeated uh, cycles, uh, heating and cooling cycle. So for this one. Okay, uh, thank you all. Any question? You can drop it. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Javad, for a very informative presentation. Hope you guys are interested with this webinar. Please do give us a feedback and share the form comment sections. Let us know if you have any suggestion for the upcoming topics to be discussed. Now, let's move on for the next, for the Q&A session. If you have any question, do drop it in the comment section. We will address it and try to answer it. Anyone? None. If none, okay, thank you, Madam Sajna Embedi. Okay, if none, let me end this webinar by introducing the offered programs by the School of Bioscience, Faculty of Medicine, Bioscience and Nursing. Okay. Okay, thank you all. Okay, this is the offered program by the School of Bioscience. We have Bachelor of Biomedical Sciences, Bachelor of Science Biotechnology, and also ODF programs, Diploma in Medical Lab Technology. If you do have any interest in this program, you may do visit our website, www.masa.edu.my, and do email us your interest in marketing at masa.edu.my. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Mr. Javad. Thank you. See you guys in the next webinar. Thank you, Mr. Chan.